This video looks at using eigenvalues and eigenvectors to find the powers of matrices. So eigenvalues and eigenvectors, they appear in three different areas in the AI course. They appear in topic one, uh, which is what we're talking about here, finding powers of matrices. In topic three, in geometric transformations of shapes, and also in topic five, in differential equations. But we're talking about topic one here, so the context of what I'm talking about here is all around matrices and finding powers of matrices. But before we get into that, let's just recap on what eigenvalues and eigenvectors mean. They sound a little bit intimidating, but if you think about it from a visual point of view, they're not too bad. So I have a I have this diagram here on the right hand side. So I have three vectors shown and their respective span lines. So this red vector, this green vector, and this purple vector. Now let's let's say that we applied a transformation matrix to these vectors. So this transformation matrix M, which is a two by two. Let's just say, I'll just, make, I'll just make this up on the fly. And let's just say that when we applied this transformation matrix, which kind of moves vectors around, it transforms them, it might rotate them, might stretch them, might reflect them. But let's say when we did do that, the red vector turned into something that looks like this. Let's say the green vector turned into something that looked like this. And let's say the purple vector turned into something that looked like this. Well, out of these three transformations, the green one stands out to me because it doesn't move off its span line. It stays on the span line, but it just stretched. And looking at this, it's stretched by about a factor of two. Whereas the red vector and the purple vector, they both moved off their span lines. Now, this green vector here would be called an eigenvector of this transformation matrix M. So an eigenvector means that the vector doesn't move off its span line. It just stretches or shrinks. Now the factor in which it does stretch, stretch or shrink, so in this case here, say a factor of two, that would be the eigenvalue of that, vector, of that eigenvector. So that's all it means. It means vectors that stay on the span line when applied by a transformation matrix. Now the symbols that we use uh, for eigenvalues and eigenvectors, um, I'll start with eigenvalues. I'll just write this above it here. We use this lambda symbol here. So we'll be dealing with two eigenvalues. So it'll be lambda one, and lambda two. And the eigenvectors, we just use this lowercase x. So x1 for eigenvector one, and x2 for eigenvector two. Now in this video, I'm gonna stay at a pretty high level. If I went through all the underlying detail, the video would last for about 30 minutes. So my aim for this video is to just show the progression of, um, of why we need to use eigenvalues and eigenvectors when finding powers of matrices, uh, and then just show you the progression of, of sort of how we work towards finding an end result. But in terms of the underlying detail of actually finding them, I'll briefly talk about it, but I won't go through all the details and, and why the formulas make sense because it would just simply just take too long. Okay, so let's just get started here. You'll see here of the three matrices formulas given to us in the AI formula sheet, this third one here is to do with the power formula for a matrix, this M to the power of N. So I just have written this here. So M to the power of N, so N, some sort of matrix here, and we're probably most likely gonna be dealing with two by twos. If we raise it to the power of N, that will equal, and the formula says this new matrix P, where P is the matrix of eigenvectors. So this P here will be a two by two. The first column will be eigenvector one, and the second column will be eigenvector two multiplied by this new matrix D, which is the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues. So a diagonal matrix means all values are zero, apart from the leading diagonal, so top left to bottom right, and they are the eigenvalues of matrix M. And then finally, uh, the inverse of P, so the inverse matrix of P, so just simply the eigenvector matrix, uh, the inverse of that. So if I substitute those values in, you can see here that my m to the power of n, so the matrix m for any given power of n, will be a sort of combination of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And I have substituted these values in. So that's that expression here. It'll be in terms of n, which is the power on top of the eigenvalues. So you can see here, okay, in order to find the matrix m for a given power of n, I need to go ahead and find these items. I need to find the two eigenvalues and I need to find the two eigenvectors. Okay, let's go ahead and find the eigenvalues first. I can either find these by hand or by the calculator. I'm gonna show you the calculator first. So I have input here my matrix M. I have stored it as M. You need to store it as a letter in order to um, compute the eigenvalues. So I have stored that as letter M. I now go into my um, calculator index here. 
I go to eigenvalues, E-I-G-V-L, hit enter. Here's where I need to pull through the matrix M, hit enter, and there are my two eigenvalues. Now the two eigenvalues could also have been found by hand by going through this process here. So it starts by using what's called the characteristic equation at the top here. So the determinant of the eigenvalue multiplied by the identity matrix, subtract our initial matrix M is equal to zero. And then we go through this process. I won't go through it line by line. It will probably take too long. We end up with a quadratic in terms of lambda here. You can either solve that quadratic by hand, either by sort of factorizing or maybe using the quadratic formula or using N solve. And we get our two eigenvalues down the bottom here. Um, as a result, and that lines up with the values that our calculator gave us earlier. So these two eigenvalues here, eigenvalue one, which is equal to 5.5, .5, and eigenvalue two, which is equal to 10, we will, and I won't do it on the next line because I want to find the eigenvectors next, we're gonna substitute that into this equation here for these two eigenvalues. Okay, so now we need to find the two eigenvectors to find our matrix P, and then also find the inverse of that to find this sort of last matrix here, the inverse of P. So again, this can be found either using calculator or by hand. I'll show you how to use your calculator to find this. So let's bring the calculator up. We have already stored our matrix M uh, into the calculator, and then we found the eigenvalues. Let's now find the eigenvectors. We go back into the index, choose this eigenvectors here, hit enter, pull through the matrix M, and there it is there, pretty ugly numbers. Uh, there is actually a technique to make these numbers look a little bit nicer in terms of the lowest digit being the integer one. Um, I won't go through that here because it'll take a little bit to um, to sort of to explain and, and wrap your head around. But this is actually fine. The, 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 this left-hand column is my eigenvector one and the right-hand column is my eigenvector two. Because the decimals are really long, I'm actually gonna store this into my calculator as the letter P. So I go control, store, P, hit enter. So my calculator now remembers P uh, as my two eigenvector um, as the matrix P. And I can also go one step further here. If I go P to the power of negative one, or in other words, the inverse of P and hit enter, I now have my inverse of P matrix as well, which I'm gonna store as, I'll just choose the next letter Q. I can't store it as the inverse of P. I don't have that letter here. So if I go control, store, Q, there's my inverse of P. So give me a second and I'll write these two down. So there we have our two matrices there, P and the inverse of P. We could have also found our eigenvectors um, using a by hand technique. And here's that process shown here. So this is the process for the first eigenvalue 5.5. We use this equation here, which kind of looks like the characteristic equation from earlier. So the original matrix M subtract the eigenvalue 5.5 multiplied by the identity matrix, multiplied by the eigenvector one that's associated with the eigenvalue. And I have substituted those lines in there. Uh, I go through the process, I end up getting an equation here um, in terms of A and B, where A and B are the two values in my eigenvector, X1. Now down here you can see this is the process of sort of selectively choosing a value for either A and B such that the uh, eigenvector ends up with nice whole numbers. And you're probably wondering, well, hang on, this here, which is the first column of my P matrix, because it's the first eigenvector, it looks different to my values over here. And it does, but the important concept here is that there's actually an infinite number of eigenvectors. There's many different eigenvectors that you could potentially use. What's important is the proportion between the two numbers. In other words, kind of the direction that the vector is heading in. So you can see, you can see here negative one and one, if you try to sort of visualize what that looks like, in proportion, negative 0.707 and 0.707 kind of is on the same span. It's just a little bit shorter, but it's another example of an eigenvector of M. Now we could do the same process here for eigenvalue two is equal to 10. I only have the first one here just because it would take up too much room. And I would get the second eigenvector X2, and that would be the second column here in my P matrix. Now one limitation of using the calculator to find the eigenvectors is you'll end up with pretty nasty looking answers. There'll always be really long, long decimals. It doesn't, the calculator doesn't really have that ability to selectively choose a nice value for either A or B, so the top or bottom number in the eigenvector such that the two results are nice whole integers. It doesn't have that unfortunately. So it is good to know this technique to do it by hand because then your P matrix 
will look quite clean with nice whole integers, but doing this as well and, and storing the values, it's very important to store it so that you don't get rounding issues, is okay as well. Okay, so we have found all of the um, information that we need now to find this expression for m in terms of n. We have the p matrix, which is our two eigenvectors. Uh, we have the inverse of p and we have the two eigenvalues. So let's now rewrite this line here with all of those values substituted in. Okay, so that's this line here. I didn't have enough room across my page to actually put in the values of p and uh, the inverse of p, but you can see here I have substituted in my eigenvalues. So there, this right here now is an expression for any given power of m. So m to the power of whatever it is, so power of 3, power of 10, I can just simply substitute in that power into the power of my two eigenvalues and then get the result. So let's actually now go back to the question, hence find m to the power of four. So I'm gonna write this out as to the power of four, use my calculator to find out what that two by two matrix is, m to the power of four, and then compare it just by simply doing this n matrix to the power of four, which my calculator can do. Okay, so that's this line here. Let's now go ahead and find out what that is equal to. So I've entered that here. So my uh, recall that I had my P and inverse of P matrices stored as P and Q. I couldn't store this one here because the calculator can't store it in terms, of a, uh, in terms of a variable, the power being a variable. So I had to enter that in. I hit enter and I get this. So I'll just, I'll just write this down on my page. Okay, so that's my result there. That right there is m to the power of four using eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Let's now compare that to just if I had simply uh, entered my m matrix, which I, which I still have stored, and if I just raise that to the power of four, I get the same result. Now you're probably wondering, well, why didn't you just do that from the start? And that, that's a very fair question. Well, the first question here is find an expression for the matrix M to any given power of N, and my calculator can't do that. So that's why I went through all that process to get to this line here, which is a very useful line, and it's particularly useful over in topic four when we start dealing with long-term probability um, and Markov chains, because it's very handy to have a transition matrix, which will be this M, but it's over in topic four, we call it T, to the any given power. So it could be, say, find the state uh, after 30 days or after 60 months to be able to just have an expression in terms of a power n is very useful. But if I just ask to find a matrix to any given power, it's actually quite easy on the calculator to do, just to enter that matrix and raise it to that power. Okay, there was an overview of utilizing eigenvectors and eigenvalues to find powers of matrices.